Okay. Yeah, let's get started. Um, I will come back to some of these questions if you put them in the Q&A panel. i just noticing a couple pop up. I'll do my best to sort of uh, handle any that I can as we go through. And if I have time at the end, I'll touch base on those. And otherwise, I'll ask that uh, people sort of uh, direct uh, the questions to my email as well. But like I said, I'll do my best to answer them as I go. Okay, so you have ACDC, you've opened it up, and the default mode in ACDC is manage mode. So manage mode is the mode by, by which you will be actually doing your um, cataloging of your files. So uh, manage mode differs from develop mode or an edit mode or uh, photos mode, that sort of thing, in the sense that it provides a platform for you to easily navigate to your files, um, whether it be by using the catalog function, which is indicated right here, or just using a simple folder hierarchy, okay? Uh, in the center, there's just a very simple thumbnail panel, which is adjustable. Um, so we can change, for example, the size of these images right here, just in the bottom right uh, corner here, or we can keep them small, but it just enables us to see, basically have a preview panel of the uh, thumbnails of the images that are located in the folder that we've navigated to, or the catalog that we've navigated to. Um, also in uh, manage mode is the ability to actually catalog the files. And when I say catalog, I'm using a sort of bulk term, which means to apply metadata. So um, images in ACDC have a bunch of different qualities that are considered metadata. Um, but most of the metadata that you're gonna be interacting with is gonna be from the properties panel here. And if we look at the properties panel, we can see a couple things that we'll talk about in further, more depth as we go further into this workshop. But things like um, uh, tagging an image, which tagging is truly just a bimodal way of indicating, you know, uh, it's just a it's a it's a it's a metadata item that is either on or off, and that's it. Um, and it to me, people tag images in the sense that they might be like, oh, I need to edit this image in the future, so I'm just going to tag it to make sure, and then that way it's searchable now. Um, then you have a list of uh, things like these uh, ratings here. Some people use ratings in different ways. Um, so I, when I was talking to Alec Watson a couple of years ago, and we were talking about his sort of system, he uh, rated images uh, that he was never, they were perfect, that he didn't need to make any adjustments or edits to, he would rate them at like a one. Um, and then the images that he needed to make adjustments to or something like that, he would rate it like a two or a three. And then the images that he planned to call, he would rate it like a four or five. So that was like one way that he inter, inter, uh, integrated ratings into his system. But, you know, for most users as well, their rating system might just be like, oh, I like this image the most, therefore I'm going to give it a five, right? Um, and then I don't like this image that I've taken or whatever, I'm going to rate it a one. And they don't necessarily do anything with that. They're not intending to develop those images. They're not intending to cull any images. They just want a system that when they go to catalog or, or navigate to their images that they like, they can click on the five button. And uh, for example, if I go to catalog and I click on the five button, then I'm getting a listing of all these five uh, um, rated images. Right. So earlier when people were asking like, hey, is there a best rated, a best system for uh, sort of for um, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, navigating and interacting with your files in ACDC, is there a best workflow? The answer is no. And, you know, the reason why is because there's so many different ways to use it. And ACDC is purposefully designed to the software in a way that you can sort of figure out a system that works best for you. Um, then you have things like color labels, which we'll talk about later. And then of course, keywords, which was also alluded to earlier when we were talking about keyword hierarchies. So, so in essence, uh, let's, uh, sort of look at this in this way. Uh, let's just get the snipping tool out and I'll discuss what I mean. Hopefully you guys can see the snipping tool. I think this should come up in the, uh, um, in the, uh, uh what's the word for it in the uh, recording, but so. In essence, uh, manage mode is uh, sort of separated into three qualities, okay? So I'm just gonna use this and I'm gonna indicate right here. So this section is for navigation, okay? So folders and catalog are the principal methods by which you're going to navigate to files using ACDC. And so once your images are quote unquote cataloged, then this becomes an incredible tool for uh, navigating to your files, finding them and interacting with them. Okay, so that's that one section. So that's the navigation section. 
Uh, then let's talk, like I said, the next section that would make sense would be this section right here. And this is the preview pane. Uh, so the preview pane in this case is used for physically seeing your images and interacting with them in that context. Uh, the preview pane is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Uh, and then lastly, uh, like I said, is the sort of application or uh, organizing tab. And this is the tab by which you actually assign data to your images. And so if we think of ACDC in managed mode in this context, I think it becomes a little bit less complicated because when you open up managed mode for the first time and you're looking at managed mode, you're going like, oh my God, there's a lot of buttons I can click on. There's a lot of things to see, uh, especially when these icons start appearing on your images and that sort of thing. When you start interacting with them, then you're going to go, okay, what's going on? What does this information mean? And I think fundamentally just simplifying managed mode to this quality of navigation uh, visually presenting your images and organizing uh, and assigning information to your images in this way keeps it super simple. So hopefully that provides you a bit of a grounding, a, a place to start with when we're interacting with Manage Mode, because you're opening it up and you're seeing this already. So how is ACDC different from other um, uh, photo editing software, photo management software? Okay, so really, really, really important. Okay, before we start going importing our files and that sort of thing, we need to understand that ACDC, okay, this is super, this is like one of the principal reasons why ACDC has, um, has continued and developed and grown as a software for over 25 years is that it does not interact like other photo editing softwares. And the way that it doesn't interact with other photo editing softwares is there is no uh, separate uh, space that your images are held. There's no like separate database for your images. And to translate this, what I mean is, if you open something like Lightroom up, right? It, uh, it, it forces you essentially to, um, to import images into that Lightroom database. Um, and, uh, and then so those images live there now. Um, and then you interact with those which are separate from the actual locations of those images on your hard drive. ACDC, is always going to be interacting directly with your hard drive. And there's a couple of ways that I can illustrate to you and this, uh, this to you, and this is super, super, super important. So, um, so first and foremost, let's describe which folder I'm in. So if I go to my folder tree, I see my hierarchy here. You can see that I'm in my pictures folder and I'm in a folder called my landscape folder. So I just wanna make sure that everyone understands that and can see that that's the folder I'm in. So if that's a question to you, just sound off in chat. I just wanna make sure that that is understood. Awesome. Cool. Um, so uh, Doc actually asked an interesting question too. In the case that you open up your ACDC and you're not uh, uh, moved to manage mode by default, maybe your media mode or view mode is your default. These modes contain the sort of different uh, ways to interact with your images. So doc, we are in manage mode. That's how we got to where we are now. Now, if you open up ACDC and you have not navigated to a folder yet, it might look something like this. So um, when we when we when we're interacting with these, what we can do is we can go into something like you know uh, pictures in this case, and then once you see that I click on pictures, I'm starting to interact with this hierarchy, and so I essentially am doing a very similar thing by clicking on these folders that to just directly click on the hierarchy itself. Uh, does that make sense, Doc? That when I'm clicking on those folders, I'm essentially interacting with this hierarchy here. Anyway. So I'm in this folder, this landscape folder right here. People can see that. Um, let's have a look now uh, and see how this re uh, replicates or resembles in this case, our, um, our actual folder structure. So what I said earlier, uh, that ACDC um, is, is sort of a direct representation of your actual hard drive that's represented in this way. So I'm just gonna to navigate to the same folder. You can see that the folder I have here is the landscape folder, right? Um, if I do something like, for example, make a move a couple files in here, okay? So let's just do this this way. I'm gonna go open up a second folder explorer. I'll open up pictures. 
and let's just go to a people folder and I'm just going to copy the first three people images here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste them here. And what you can see that ACDC uh, sort of directly reflects that immediately. And so when I said earlier that ACDC is uh, sort of presenting to you an exact replication of your folder hierarchy, this is really important to understand. Uh, so this is actually really a cool feature because it just gives you uh, so much power of navigation and you can actually use ACDC as a means to sort of change the, the, the what appears in your actual folder hierarchy in the same way. So does everyone understand, I guess, in a, in a, in a way that these two things, like my actual hard drive and, the, and what you see in ACDC are connected? That's what I want to sort of make, uh, make, uh, make plain here. Um, let's have a look here. Are you going to discuss how to create and organize images within folders? For example, you import the date, but do you want to create renamed? Yes, we're going to cover that in a second here. Uh, I see that's the menu. Okay, awesome. Just not in the menu. Great. So doc's issue is resolved. Good. Uh, Gary asked, did you create these folders on your hard drive and move the pictures on, into those folders be, before using ACDC? Oh, so I've been so, sort of slowly doing this over time, but um, the pictures folder is obviously a folder that exists in any uh, Windows users um, folder hierarchy already. Um, and it's sort of treated as the default in ACDC. Um, and then from there, I added this folder. I sort of created a folder um, called landscape um, in, in my pictures folder. And actually, and actually, we can do something right now that is kind of cool because we're going to import a bunch of images anyway. So why don't we just create a folder for it? So here's the situation, Gary. <laughs> you have taken a bunch of photos. Okay. Um, you took them yesterday. Uh, they're, you know, some environment photos. You went out uh, for, a, you know, on a quick holiday or something like that and took a couple hundred photos maybe. And you're, you're ready to sort of move those into ACDC. Now, what you can do is uh, obviously separately from ACDC, okay, just using your hard drive or whatever, you can uh, plug in your, your, your camera, like we're all very accustomed to do, and you can copy those images from your camera and put them into a folder like that pictures folder, for, for example. What we can also do is we can fundamentally use ACDC to do the exact same thing, um, we don't need to go through the process of sort of uh, doing that uh, externally in our hard drive. If it's comfortable for you, if that's something you want to do, that, then that's fine. Uh, but we can also do it with an ACDC. So let's do it with an ACDC. So I have a separate hard drive. In this case, mine is not on a camera. It's on a flash drive, but it works just the same either way. So I'm just going to create a new folder. So I'm going to right click uh, in my pictures folder here. I'm going to go new and I'm going to go to folder and a new folder pops up. Uh, note that a new folder is now visible in my, uh, my, um, my uh, folder hierarchy here. Can everyone see that that's now been added? And importantly, if I also open up my Windows tab once again and go to my pictures folder and my lens, or actually, no, you can see that I have a new folder listed there as well. So once again, just sort of reiterating the fact that these things are very linked. Let's rename this folder. Uh, let's just call it uh, Sunday, because in this case, we took these photos on Sunday. Um, then I will click away. And then this folder has now been updated. Uh, so the Sunday folder is listed there and it says there is no items in the selected folder, but that's okay because we can put the photos that we just took on our camera into this folder uh, using ACDC. So let's do that. Uh, so earlier I said that there is no um, direct importing into uh, a separate database in ACDC, okay? Uh, in the sense that there's no like lengthy import times that are involved. There's no process needed to really like create. Um, yeah, in, in, if you've used Lightroom, you understand you're moving files into it sort of, and, and in the essence, you're sort of copying them and they're going to live within that uh, Lightroom uh, database. But we don't need to do that in ACDC. We can just simply move those files uh, from our device and put them directly into this folder. But this folder will be represented once again in our hierarchy, our, folder, our actual Windows hierarchy. So I'll go to import and then I'll just, uh, let's just click from disk here. So I'm just going, once again, I'm going to import and then from disk. And this is our process of us importing new images. 
So uh, you will probably have a camera plugged in. So you'll click on your camera that will be plugged in using a USB or some other form of uh, connection device. And in this case, I just have them in a little um, a disk drive here. So they're in my transcend here, but we're gonna use that. And I'm gonna go to my pictures folder here, uh, which is the folder, the photos that I took on Sunday in this example. And I'm gonna click okay. And it brings up this screen. So this is our importing screen, which will essentially move these images for me. Um, now, like I said, what I could have done is just copy and pasted these images directly into, uh, um, but in this case, I can also use something like this import function. So it has a bunch of images here. You can see those images there. They have, they don't really have a, a naming structure that's valuable in any way. They just say 00008 and then they're numbered there. And then we can choose a destination for these images to arrive. So I don't want to do anything with those uh, those images other than change the location that they uh, that they pop into. So we'll choose that. Uh, so we'll go uh, pictures, and then we can put them into the Sunday folder and hit OK. And I can choose a subfolder if I needed to, but I can just choose the destination directly this way. Um, and then I'm just going to click import, and it's as simple as that. There's going to be this little indicator that'll pop up telling me the progress of importing these images. And when it's done, there they are. And let's browse our new images. So uh, browsing our images is um, adding the thumbnail to the database. Um, uh, so when you navigate to uh, folders in ACDC, uh, to that you've created or images in general, you're sort of navigating through folders and you'll see when you enter a folder that you haven't been in before that the thumbnails will slowly appear. Uh, well, it won't be that slow, but they'll appear on your images. And what this indicates to you is that you've now browsed this folder. So uh, when, by browsing something, you're adding its information, in this case, very simply the thumbnail that it's producing for you to your own database, which we'll talk about momentarily. We'll just say yes to that. Um, okay, so we have a new folder here. And let's once again, just verify this exact looks exactly like the um, uh, it does in our in our, uh, our, our preview window here, our, our Windows window. So go to Sunday here. And you can see that those images uh, that were once on a quote unquote camera in this situation have now been added to uh, this Sunday folder that we created momentarily. Um, does that make sense to everybody so far, how we went through the process of uh, importing uh, these images into this folder? It's a pretty simple process. Uh, it's just going navigating in this case from the disk to that, that image. So uh, just a note too uh, of something we can also do. Um, what we can also do, uh, let's just navigate to a different folder this time. Um, and we're going to navigate to our landscape folder here. And what we can do is I can also do something like this. So if I have my transcend uh, and I'll go into this picture folder and all of you can see that this was uh, the external drive that contained my pictures. So in this case, this could be your camera, right? What I could do is I can actually simply just copy these images as well, just by selecting them all and copying them. And alternatively, I can do that to navigate and move them into ACDC as well. So again, this is, works very similar. And then those images are now added just like they were previously. So those images get added. Now, somebody mentioned earlier, they were talking about uh, searching for duplicates. And this is a great example of uh, a good example to explain uh, how uh, ACDC can search for duplicates because we now have uh, 00001 through 00022 in two separate folders in ACDC. So we uh, copy and paste them into our landscape folder, but we also imported these same files into our Sunday folder. So if we go up to tools and we go to find duplicates and we added the folder that in this case is just the pictures folder, let's say, and we searched our pictures folder. And the reason why I've chosen our pictures folder is because pictures in this case contains not only the landscape section here, but also Sunday. 
Um, and just to reiterate that again, it's tools, find duplicates. And then we'll add that folder. And then what we could do is we can search. And I think what we'll see is that some of those images now pop up. Uh, so 000020 is a great example of it. Uh, so this image that you see right here uh, is now found in two places. Uh, so it is found uh, in uh, the landscape folder. Can everybody see the landscape and the Sunday folder listed in the, uh, in the, in the directory here? So if you can see those two things, then you can make a choice about which one you want to delete. If you want to delete them at all. In many cases, you might actually have multiples in multiple folders, and that's okay. Uh, you don't necessarily need to delete them. But let's say that I wanted to delete this one in the landscape folder. Well, I could click that, uh, and I could navigate to, let's delete 20, 20 21, and 22 uh, from the landscape folder. So I'll click here, delete it from the landscape folder. And let's just find number 2022 as well. There it is. And delete it from the landscape file. And that should allow us to delete those three images from our landscape. And if I navigate to the landscape folder, you'll see that those images, uh, oops, uh, where will they? There they are. Uh, it goes up to 19. So the three, the last three images were in fact deleted. Um, yeah, so that gives us a bit an ability to delete those images, uh, that, that were in essence duplicates in this situation. Okay. So what have we done so far? Uh, so we've explained that the fact that the hard drive, uh, is distinct, uh, and sort of the way that the hard drive is treated in ACDC is the same way that your actual hard drive works, uh, within windows itself. So no importing, uh, needed to move those images directly into their own location. No, we're just working with the hard drive in this case. And then we went through the process of uh, uh, importing our images, which we did in a couple ways. One way to do that was to just click on import from disk. Another way was to sort of not use the windows to navigate and then copy them into ACDC. Um, so we've also talked a little bit about na navigating through managed mode in the sense that we're already using this folder structure. We're getting more familiar with this folder structure, what it, de it means to move between folders. Um, we're getting more familiar with the view mode and uh, these thumbnails. We now know that these thumbnails, when we navigate to a new folder for the first time, it's going to browse those images and those thumbnails are then added to the database. So. Here's a fun question, and we're going to talk about what the database is, because this is a relevant to talking about metadata, which is next. Okay, so I'm going to open up today for you guys the help file in ACDC, and I'm going to link this actually. Uh, Owen says, if you rename one photo, does duplicate selection still work? I believe so, Owen. I think it searches for both um, sort of like similar thumbnails and also name, like it, there's a multiple criteria by which it's searching for. Uh, another thing, it might actually check the sort of innate IPTC uh, metadata in addition to that, um, which uh, might line up in, in addition to that. So here's the help file that talks about the database. So let's talk about the database. Um, uh, Tommy just added, uh, yes, renaming does not break the duplication finding process. So it sounds like Tommy's familiar with that. So the ACDC database uh, stores image, uh, document, media file information automatically when you browse your folders. So earlier when I was talking about browsing, browsing is, again, just finding your images using those folder hierarchies, navigating into a folder. That's browsing. So what is stored within the database? Exactly these items are stored within the database. Uh, so some of these that we're already familiar with, uh, so the thumbnails, for example, uh, but also what is stored is categories, notes, keywords, color labels, authors, dates, ratings, captions, and face data. So these are items that, uh, that we actually have uh, the ability to manipulate in ACDC. Um, so some of which we, we will be uh, manipulating, uh, for example, keywords, categories, color labels, ratings, that sort of thing. So when we change those items, uh, then that is then added to the database, our database. Um, Michael asked, do you have to open each folder for the database to build the thumbnail? 
Uh, that's a really good question, Michael. I think you can force the force ACDC to check uh, folders and, and and different locations on your hard drive. Um, and also, I think it actually it may do that automatically uh, in addition to you interacting with your database. There's a process by which it sort of constantly checks for that. But if you uh, send me an email, I can find you more information on that because I, to be honest with you, don't know offhand if that is the case, but I do know that there is a way to force a sort of a, a browsing process. So email me, I'll get you a, a, a better answer. Um, okay, so these are the things that are contained within the database. So what do you do with the database? Uh, in this case, we're just talking about having one, but we're not actually talking about what it does. So the purpose of a database is um, is to uh, um, is to it contains this information, and it allows us to reference this information as we move through um, uh, navigating ACDC and as we get new ACDC products in the future. So uh, the benefit of saving your database and embedding all of this metadata, things that we're going to be talking about is that uh, when we go to utilize a new product in the future, for example, if you were to purchase ACDC Ultimate 2023, we can then load previous databases so we don't have to go through this process of adding this uh, same uh, information again. So that'll be innate as a uh, way of converting that database and adding it to our new software. So databases are automatically created, like you're already creating a database if you're using ACDC right now, like these things are being added, if at the very least just uh, creating those and browsing to those thumbnails. Uh, but all of this, uh, if you start adding these, uh, these other metadata criteria, then those are things that we can uh, reference and use uh, by saving our database and then importing it when we update our product. So, so then the question becomes, okay, Adam, a great, I know that I'm saving a database. Uh, you know, how do we go about um, sort of converting that database uh, to a new software? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's just talk about some items that are actually contained within the database now. Um, okay, uh, maybe before we do that, uh, actually, yeah, which order would I wanna do this in? Yeah, let's rename the files first and then let's go through the process um, of uh, actually uh, um, uh, going through and adding keywords and categories and that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, Doc, I am Canadian. ACDC is a Canadian company. Um, okay, so these are, uh, these are our images here. Uh, so I have uh, one image through 2022, uh, 22 images here. And uh, what we can do is we can uh, go up to the batch function. And there's a batch is an extremely powerful tool, um, or a series of tools actually uh, would be better, better suited for this. Uh, let's get familiar with this. Uh, there is a ton of different things we can do within this. Uh, so in the event that your images were uh, uh, sort of uh, imported or copied into ACDC with the wrong rotation, uh, you can simply rotate and flip your images from here. Uh, if you wanted to batch convert these files to a different file format, for example, if I wanted to take these JPEGs and turn them into TIFF files, I could do so. Um, I can resize these images as a batch, but one of the things that's very useful is we can actually rename our images uh, in this folder altogether. So uh, your computer, uh, sorry, rather your, uh, your camera might have a naming scheme already, uh, and most uh, naming schemes are just a series of numbers, right, uh, after like a DSC or something like that. And this gives us the ability to rename uh, all of these images at the same time. So I'm just gonna click batch, rename, rename. Now, the rename tool, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on. Uh, and the reason why is because there's a ton of different things you can do within the rename tool. But just as a very simple, uh, fundamental understanding of the rename tool is that I can change the templating of the way that our, our name appears in ACDC. So if I wanted to create a naming scheme that was unique to these photos, um, so we could say that this was uh, taken, uh, let's say that these images were taken in a specific location. So they were taken in the caribou and uh, they were taken on a specific date. 
So I could say like Nov 617th or something like that. And then I can uh, also write in uh, a number. Um, uh, so I can number these images as well. So I can go number, 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 and that will change the original name to the new name in this case. Um, so I can go through and I can add uh, this naming function. So now it's listed as caribou November 17th. And then, then it's listed with the numbers here because I've added these pound signs at the end here. So it goes from 001 to 2022 down at the very bottom here. Can everybody see the current and new names that are listed there? Awesome. Okay. So there's a couple questions here. I will show you how to get to the properties organized panel on the right in a second here. Um, Gregor asked, can the database be stored on a server to be used by various users of ACDC? Uh, yeah, so you can save your database, like it, you can export your database and it can live anywhere. It's just a file, right? Uh, the, there, might not be, there might not be anything to reference provided that those users don't have accesses, access to the similar images, that sort of thing. Uh, with similar names in their similar folder structure. So um, just the, the, that's part of the reason why. So the database uh, does obviously care where these images live. Um, and, and that's sort of how it's constructing that information. So just importing or exporting the database on its own without actually having the architecture, the infrastructure, the folders, folders, that sort of thing with those same files in it might not necessarily be directly useful to someone else, uh, but it certainly can be stored externally. Um, can you convert Heek files to JPEG? I believe so. Heek was recently supported, I want to say three or four, um, three or four uh, uh, um, uh, updates to ACDC ago. Um, so I believe that is possible. Um, okay, and then can I apply categories, keywords, et cetera, using batch tool? You don't need to, because they can be applied in, you can, you can apply them in, in, in batch uh, just using the properties panel. Okay, so we've all seen that I've changed the names on these. Now I can do some really funky stuff with these. I can uh, search and replace. I can change the case. Uh, let's just make a couple adjustments now if we wanted to. Uh, I don't want to replace search and replace any words uh, in these titles. I don't need that, but we can case change it. For example, let's make it all lowercase. So now you can see that the order of it, the template has been changed and now the case change uh, changes over here. Um, if I wanted to, I could insert text. Uh, let's say I could insert um, Canada uh, at the very beginning and maybe an under, uh, underscore. Um, and then that inserts it at the very first uh, position. So it's added there. Uh, but I can change this position. So I can add Canada after caribou if I want to. And you could see that that then moves around, right? Does everyone see that I can move this sort of uh, item, this inserted item to the, uh, after the, uh, the word caribou? So I can just play around with the, uh, that, that section and where it's added. We'll just keep it at the, uh, the first position for now. And then let's say I don't want to remove any text, uh, maybe, and I don't have any spaces to strip in this case. So I'd be happy with that sort of adjustment. Um, so there's my uh, current name and my new name. And then I would go through the renaming process and it'll take a quick second to rename. And we can see that all of my images in this folder, in the Sunday folder here, now have adjusted names underneath the thumbnail itself. Can everyone see that they're now retitled? So that's the process that I could go through of renaming our files. So we've talked a little bit about ACDC. We've talked about uh, sort of what it does, that sort of thing. But all we've really done so far is import some images and then rename the lot of them. You know, um, Let's go through the process of actually rating these images, adding some metadata to these files. Cool. So in ACDC, uh, would you add a rating? OK. So the ratings are up here. Oh, and earlier somebody had asked about the properties panel, how to get to that. Uh, great question. So when you open up uh, manage mode, uh, what you'll probably have access to is uh, a metadata will be the one that comes up. Uh, you might even have file open 
does everyone see at the bottom these three tabs here? Um, so those three tabs will showcase some pretty different information. Uh, so metadata uh, uh, um, showcases IPTC data. So IPTC data is, um, is a universal um, metadata that's added to your image. Um, this is universal in the sense that these items will be uh, readable by any user uh, on a Windows operating system. Um, the same will be the case for EXIF data. EXIF data is generally like camera information. So shutter speed, ISO, that sort of thing. These will be if provided that you've taken the image yourself and you're not me that is getting uh, stock images off the internet. These uh, will actually be pre-filled by your camera. So all of this information will already exist there. And then lastly, ACDC metadata, which is exactly what I was talking about when I mentioned earlier the ACDC database. So this information is what we're adding. We're adding ACDC metadata. And uh, from this panel, we can see a little bit of that metadata. We can see the caption, the author, the notes, keywords, and label, which we have yet to add any keywords to this image, but there's some information there. It also indicates the date that this has been added to the database and also the import date. Okay, so that's the properties metadata section. If we go to organize, Organize is the tab that allows us to add things like categories, add things like keywords, uh, add collections, and also rate from this menu as well. And then file contains the file data. Uh, so there's nothing to be done here really other than tur turn off read only, um, but it lists the file name. Uh, the file name has uh, been changed, so it lists it there. It shows, oops, it shows which uh, folder it's located in. Uh, create a date, modify date, access date, and then a bunch of just like uh, image specific information. So the size of the file, the uh, dimensions of the file, uh, the bit rate, uh, pixels per inch in this case is uh, web resolution. Uh, can everyone see that sort of information listed here and understand that there's three tabs here that all contain very different information. So this is the properties panel. Now, you might not have the properties panel uh, open. Uh, so if you go to panes, uh, if properties panel is hidden like this, um, you'll see just the search panel is open. You can always add panes um, using ACDC just from the panes section here. So properties should by default be open, uh, but there it is right there just in panes if you want to, um, if you want to add it, uh, or if for some reason it's been deactivated, uh, you can do so there. Uh, additionally, if you can't see your panes uh, window or perhaps even your folder structure here, uh, it's possible that you've accidentally clicked on these little buttons here, which hide them. So they uh, enable you to see more of your thumbnails here, uh, but you can unhide them by clicking on those icons right there. So if you are clicking on your hide icon and uh, nothing's coming up, it's, prob it's probably because your properties and your search pane are not checked here. Um, yeah, so that's sort of how that one would interact with that. Okay, a couple new questions. Uh, Gigi Green asked, as a relatively new user of ACDC, I've been loving how it helps me organize all my graph design and photo files and just learning that it's a Canadian product. This Canadian loves it. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you, Gigi. That's just a nice comment. Um, Randy asks, uh, will the rename function you just demonstrated auto assign numbers based on the manual sort order you have? Uh, that's a really good question. So if you go to batch and then rename, um, what it will do is, so I've added these numbers here. Um, so in this case, uh, you, can, you can add any number of pound signs. It'll increase the total number of uh, digits in your, uh, in your image's uh, number count. But you can also auto detect. Um, so auto detect will look in the folder that you're changing the names. And it will essentially assess what numbers have been already pre-assigned to your images and try to do its best to assign numbers that are um, relevant to the amount of images that you already have in that folder. Um, but yeah, this is the pound sign that enables you to essentially add a number count to your image. image. Hopefully that answers your question, Randy. Diane asked, are file names only changed within ACDC or hard drive modified? No, great question. So uh, again, the, coming back to our, our initial point and our very important point of ACDC interacting with your hard drive. Check this out, Diana. <laughs> so if I go to that same folder in my, um, 
my folder window here. If I go to documents or sorry, pictures rather, um, and we're just gonna find the same folder. It's the Sunday folder within pictures. If I go to Sunday, what do you know? All of our images have a uh, change name uh, that corresponds with the one that we had changed in ACDC. Once again, illustrating the link between our hard drive and ACDC's uh, functions. So yeah, they're changed. Um, yeah, and then Tommy uh, answered your question there as well. Okay. Okay, Sanford asked, how can I do batch processing for subdirectories without having to manually go down the tree? Um, uh, well, you can do it this way. Uh, you can go importing your files. Oh, batch processing. Uh, so if you're to batch uh, rename your images, well, it's whatever, it's whatever um, folder you're interacting with at the time. So uh, you do have to navigate to some form of, uh, of subdirectory in order to engage with it. I don't think you can batch without indicating. Yeah, so if I don't have anything selected, these are um, then uh, not available to me. So I need to be able to actually select some images in a folder in order to go through the process of batching. Um, okay, let's get back on track here. So let's uh, make some uh, metadata adjustments to this file, uh, this folder. So let's rate some images. Uh, it really doesn't matter what we rate them. Um, I can either click up here in the top right hand corner here, uh, or I can click actually up on our image here. And there's also a little rating panel right there. And as, you, as I do that, you can see that my images have been rated. Now, this uh, is kind of slow unless I'm doing it with something called uh, auto advance turned on. Uh, I can click through and make sure that everything is, is, uh, is sort of, uh, all these numbers are added um, uh, you know, by hand in this case. Uh, but what I can also do is I could just simply turn on salt, something called auto advance. And that enables me to just click the key. And when I click the key, it'll advance to the next image. So we'll turn that on. We'll go to options. And we'll go to, let's auto advance. So auto advance is under the general pan, pan, uh, panel here. And then uh, let's add it for, uh, let's see here. Um, so auto advance, uh, turn it on for manage mode. And uh, so auto advance, we're applying tags, ratings, labels. I'm able to add keywords to it and hit okay. So when I add a uh, rating or a label, so when I uh, essay three for this image, Oops, uh, let's see here. Oh, this might only work if I have a, oh no, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I hit, uh, in this case, control and then a number. So I can rate that two, three, four, five, one, two, four, five, five. And then it essentially just goes through and rates those images uh, for me, which enables me to quickly uh, rate them rather than having to either navigate up to this little panel here and then be making multiple clicks through that process. So auto advance is very powerful. Um, also, if you were rating these, uh, you might want to change the view method to film strip. So this enables you to better see your image. Um, and even if I already have an image rated, I can come back here and I can rate it again. So I can say, click control three. And that'll re-rate my image, as you can see. And it'll, once again, auto advance to the next image. So I could even go through and re-rate these images if I wanted to. Um, does everyone understand why I'm using auto advance in this way? I just want to check in and make sure that people get the utility of that, because it might be lost on some people. Yeah, Anthony, I have a keyboard that doesn't have the little number panel on the right-hand side. Uh, so when I said I had to hold control, Control is essentially uh, mimicking that second number pa pad there. If your keyboard has your number pad that's to the right of the arrow keys, then you could sh should be able to just click the um, the uh, the actual number itself, and then it'll uh, it'll it auto advance there. But I just have a really small keyboard and it just doesn't have that on there. So where do you get auto advance? Go to tools, options, and under the general menu here is auto advance. And I think by default, auto advance is not turned on, it's turned off. So you want to turn it on and you can turn it on by adding it to manage mode or view mode if that's what you're using to rate your images. 
And then it gives you the ability to uh, auto advance for a variety of different um, metadata. So tags, ratings, labels, keywords, categories, that sort of thing. So uh, now is a good opportunity to talk about embedding metadata because an important thing popped up on our image here. So when we went through and we added that key, or sorry, that added that rating to our image, this little bucket appeared uh, on the bottom left of all of our thumbnails as we rated them. And I wanna make sure that everybody sees this bucket. This is super duper important information. So uh, this is what we're gonna be talking about right now. Is this bucket right there. So this bucket indicates to us that we have a pending metadata, okay? Just because you've made a rating um, to your image does not mean that it has been embedded within the file yet. The file being the JPEG image, okay? So this information is pending. And what we want to do is we want to embed this metadata. This is a good habit to get into. Um, bucket is easier to see if you turn colors as with the other icons. Oh, uh, can you do that? I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Uh, let's have a, let's have a look. Um, let's see here. Is there a manage mode section to that? Uh, is there a way to change the colors of the little icons? Thank you, Gary. It's okay. I'll add it to our YouTube. It should be up within the next couple of days. Um, Peter, if you want to let me know where that mo that uh, that tool is, I'd love to love to know. Um, I believe you. <laughs> I know that in the past they used to be color by default, like way, way, way long ago. I just didn't know that you could change the color of the icons. But anyway, so we have this little pending metadata. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to embed that metadata within the file. And what this does is allows us to do, uh, well, first of all, it allows us to essentially save that information in the file. But importantly, okay, when we embed our metadata, it en enables us in the event that we have lost our database, can't find it, it's been corrupted for some reason, blah, blah, blah. If embedded metadata is saved within your files, you can actually basically reconstruct your database using the files themselves. So this is an insurance uh, way to, um, it's, a, it's a way to assure that you're sort of uh, always interacting with your database in some way. So, so normally this information, like I said, these ratings are saved to the database. And what you do is you simply go, oh, I have the new ACDC product. I've got ACDC 2023 now. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, sort of uh, convert my old database. Uh, uh, so it's now my new database for this product. And sure enough, all these numbers come up on your image, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason why they do is because you're interacting with the, you know, your same computer. And it's just a process of needing to update that database that enables you to now see uh, that information, these fives, these threes that have been added here. Now, in like I said, in the event that the database disappears for whatever reason, what we can do is we can actually take this embedded metadata and we can go to, um, we can go to, uh, let's see here, catalog files. Da, 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 da. Yes. And catalog files allows us to look at all of these images and uh, it'll take any embedded metadata in our file and reconstruct that into our database. So this is a good way, uh, as long as we're embedding our mat metadata, it enables us to uh, catalog our files and add that information in the event that we've had a, a database, some form of database emergency. Okay, so this is all well and good, blah, blah, blah. But how do we actually go through the process of embedding it? So embedding is actually very simple. I'll just select some images to embed. I just right click on those images and I navigate down to metadata and I will click on the embed ACDC metadata option here. And what that will do is it'll pop up with this little menu here. And it says, as you organize your files, batting categories, keywords, ratings, color labels, and other metadata and ACDC face data, this organizational information is stored in the database. You have the option to embed this information in the file itself. Embedding is a safe way to back up this data, which makes it easier to relocate and share files or retrieve the data later. 
And then it gives me the ability to embed ACDC metadata, including categories, keywords, ratings, color labels, and other metadata. And then the second option is ACDC face data, which is any information that has been added in the people mode or view mode in there, which is just ACDC face data there. So I can click on both of those, which are already checked, and I click embed, and it saves that information to the file itself, which now makes it a catalogable item. Uh, so if I go to database and catalog those files, I will be able to pull that information from the files themselves and then add it to a database provided that I've lost it in some way. Uh, Gil said, ooh, I need this. I've lost stacks of keywords, but I've embedded them. Well, yeah, you're good to go, Gil. It's all good. You have that information as provided that they've been embedded. So another note is now that I've embedded this information, um, uh, you'll see, right? Uh, that uh, I have a little uh, icon, the pending metadata icon here um, is actually now gone, right? So it's, it's disappeared, which means that I have fulfilled its requirement. I've embedded the, that information. If I want to embed the rest, I'll just click on this one here, 04 all the way to 022, right click, go to metadata, embed metadata, click on embed, and it's gone. So that means that it's now been written to the file. Peter asked, how did you add the rating to the photos? Uh, I clicked on the photo and I, you can do a couple different things. You can click on uh, uh, your numpad and it'll add a number, or you can click on the little icon up at the top and add a number this way, or you can click on the uh, properties panel, panel right here and just change the number there as well. And it'll add that number to the listing. Peter asked to change icon to color use and shortcuts to toggle, go to view, drop down menu between sort and select. Okay, let's give this a share. Uh, between view and select. Uh, oh, maybe choose details? No. All right. Another time, uh, Peter. I'll figure that out when I have more time and not uh, not live for a session. But it is good to know. Um, okay, so we've added a rating. We can add some other information as well. Uh, so we can add labels. Labels might be useful for you. They they indicate uh, a color in this case, and that color will create this underlying effect underneath your image. And uh, you can have your own determinable uh, reason for why you'd apply color. Um, maybe a color uh, indicated by red was taken of, uh, you know, uh, some sort of family photo or something like that, or red was, um, you know, taken in a specific locale. Again, this is sort of custom and up to you. Uh, and you'll notice that as I apply those, I, it's auto advancing to the next image because I turned it on for labels in that way as well. Now, I think if I want to apply a color, I can just click uh, six through, oh, no, let's see here. Uh, how did I do that before? Oh, I might need to use it on the numpad. That's okay. Um, so I can apply the color label just by clicking the icon here or using it in the top right hand corner here as well. And when I do that, it auto advances to the next image and applies that color label. Once again, note that when I add a color label embedded uh, pending icon pops up again, which means this is newly uh, added and it will need to be embedded. So if you are planning on embedding your metadata, uh, just wait maybe until the very end of you adding all that metadata to go through the process of uh, then uh, um, embedding it within your files, uh, just because you're going to have to do this every single step if you want to otherwise. So I just go through that process at the very end. Okay, keywords and categories. Um, so I'm going to go to the organize panel just at the bottom right hand here. And we can add a bunch of different macro level categories to these images. So I'll just select all the images in this folder here. And uh, we can create a uh, macro category for these. So let's see what I already have here. Um, let's create a uh, category. To do uh, create a brand new blank category, uh, what we can do is we can just right click on our categories panel here and click new category. And it gives me the ability to create a top level category or a subcategory. So that's creating that hierarchy that I mentioned earlier. Uh, 
to select all of your images, you hit control A in a folder and that will select all of them at the same time. Um, so if we create a new category, uh, let's just create one for, uh, let's see, do I have a nature category? I don't. Let's just add a nature category as a top level category. And when I do that, if I hit okay, you can see that nature has been added as a category option and it's listed right here now. Now, just because I've created a category doesn't mean it's been added to my image images. Uh, to do that, I need to click on this little box to the left of it. And when I did so, you can see that there's a category icon that appears on our image, indicating to us that these images have a category now. Um, so this is actually a great opportunity to talk about the different icons that um, uh, that pop up in uh, in in manage mode here. So, because um, these icons are going to pop up and you're not going to be familiar necessarily with them, so I want to take a little time to sort of demystify these. So we've already talked about ratings. Uh, so ratings are uh, that appear up here and they indicate that an image has been rated. Uh, the color label we've talked about is listed right here and also above the image as well. It indicates that it's been, uh, there's a bit of color label assigned. Uh, embed pending uh, indicates, like I mentioned, that the file has embedded uh, metadata that's been waiting to be embedded. There is a file format icon in the top right hand corner of our image, which indicates to us what the format is. So in this case, uh, these are all JPEG images, but your images might be raw or TIFF or PNGs or what have you. Uh, so that icon in the top right-hand corner will indicate to you what the specific file format is. Category. So category appears if the file has been categorized, which it just did, as we indicated. There's another uh, method of metadata uh, called a collection. And uh, collections will appear if the file has been added to a collection. So the collection icon looks like that. Uh, skip shortcut and offline, those don't come up that often. Uh, skipped excluded as well. Tagged items, uh, so tagged items, like I said, are, is that binary? So when I click on this little binary here, it then tags the item. And it indicates to me that that binary has been checked. Uh, it's un it, You can turn it off by unclicking it in this case, and it's turned off. So some people use this binary as a method of, uh, oh, I need to do something with this image later, I'm just gonna tag it. Um, Untagged, the very same. So just as it is tagged, it can be untagged. Uh, geotagged items. So geotagged items uh, pop up when you an item has been added to the map. So if you want to add an item to the map, you go to Tools, Map, Place on Map. And clicking on your image here, it enables you to click on anywhere. Uh, so we said that we had taken these in the Caribou region. So let's just click right here. Um, and drag and drop our image in that in, the, in that location on our map. And that will geotag our image, um, basically, and it will list it as a geotagged item then. Uh, why is it not icon not popping up? Let me see here. Oh, save all, there we go. So once all of our images have been located on our map, uh, then we would just click save all. And when I click save all, you'll see that geotagged icon appear on our image there. Now, if you've taken your image on a cell phone or something else that has your roaming turned on, um, your uh, GPS turned on, uh, when you go to import those images, uh, the geotagged icon will actually already be visible. Um, it will already be assigned to your images. To turn off the map, we can just go to panes and turn off the map. So that is how you would go through the process of geotagging your images. Okay, so auto-rotate. Um, so you won't necessarily interact with auto-rotate that often, but when you import images, uh, sometimes when you go to import images, uh, ACDC will have already rotated the image because it knows that it's the wrong um, orientation when it went to go import it. So this auto rotate icon will appear and it'll indicate to you that the image has been uh, auto rotated by ACDC. 
you can actually click that auto rotate auto right to rotate icon from the thumbnail panel. And what it will do is it will allow you to uh, set it back to its original qualities if that auto rotate happens to be wrong. Um, developed. So the developed icon appears if you have developed your image straight up. That's all it does. It just indicates to you that you've made some development changes. Edited appears if the file has been edited and saved. Same thing. Uh, snapshot um, appears if, uh, if you have made a, a development snapshot in develop mode, uh, and it'll be a little snapshot icon that'll appear to indicate that as well. Uh, for developed, edited, and snapshots, uh, those will be uh, created, those icons will be created when you pull these images into actually respectively develop mode or edit mode. How did you get to the simple symbol descriptions? I went to the help help menu. Yeah, I'll just link it to you, Mary and Peter. Uh, so uh, basically, what you could do when you're ever curious about anything in ACDC, you want to search something, you go to help, and you go to I believe it's just. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. I'm blanking on this. Where is it? Enter. Oh, oh, help contents. Sorry. Yeah, the very first one. Help contents. And then, so you'd search for something like database and about the database. And then there it is. That's all the information that we brought up earlier about the database there. But help contents is super useful. I've used this a lot to demystify certain elements of ACDC. Okay, so we've added uh, ratings, we've added labels, we've geotagged a couple of our images, and then we've ca added a category to all of these images in our, uh, our folder here. So once again, I'm gonna click on all these images. Uh, let's go back to the organize panel. And what we can do now is let's actually add a subcategory under nature. Um, so under nature, I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a new category. And when I right click over nature here, it'll automatically indicate to us that it is a subcategory. So it says create a subcategory within the current selection. So it's selected nature here. That's great. I can make a new subcategory. And let's call it the caribou because these were hypothetically taken in the caribou. So, and then you can see, can everyone see that this nature category now has hierarchical keyword, or sorry, category that exists beneath it. This is sort of an important way of uh, creating an organization structure when it comes to categories. Apology, says Diane. What is the difference between the picture folder names and categories? The picture folder names and categories. Oh, I see. Okay, so these picture folders, so these are your picture folders right here. So these are folders uh, that are located on your hard drive that contain your images, okay? Um, ACDC allows you to search your images using this folder hierarchy. Categories. Categories is information that is saved uh, to your image, specifically to the image itself. It has very little to do with where it exists on the folder hierarchy here. And this information, this category that you're adding is something called ACDC metadata. So when you go to add these categories, keywords, et cetera, this metadata is, uh, is basically searchable in ACDC. It allows you to search for this information once it's been applied. So uh, Diane, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ch check this caribou option right here, okay? Um, and with that uh, selected, now that category has been added to all of these images in this specific folder. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to go into my landscape folder here. And uh, I'm just going to add a bunch of images to the nature category, but not the caribou category. So I'll just select these eight images right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them to this nature category. And now what I can do is I can navigate to these nature categories. To do that, I would move from the folder panel actually to the catalog panel, okay? So this is how we search for folders. The catalog is how we search for metadata. So if I wanted to search for images that have a five star, I just click on five and it pops up. There they all are, okay? If I click on nature now, boom. There's my nature panel. There's all my images. Let's make this smaller. There's all my images, but notice that these images that are not set in the caribou region have been added to that 
uh, that category. So if I click on instead caribou, the caribou has now been selected and it omits the ones that have a nature category added. Does everybody understand how clicking on nature provides different results from that of the caribou? This is like super powerful and I really wanna make sure that everybody understands this function. So Diane says, ah, thanks. So spending time uh, is best spent on categories rather than try to sort them in pix files and folder names. Yes, that's actually, man, it's so, I'm so grateful for when people like say things better than I, I could have. Cause you know, you start using a product and a good portion of, of sort of like translating, right? For people is like sort of not unlearning but you're trying to like remember why that would be, that would be useful for a new user in the first place. But Diane, that's so well put and that's exactly it. So the more time you spent categorizing your images, the less time you will have to spend uh, essentially reordering them as in a folder structure. Uh, and really there's no reason to reorder your images past maybe like putting them in folders like, you know, David's wedding, right? So you have David's wedding and all the wedding photos are in there, right? But you know, what if you want to, uh, you know, what if you're trying to create like a summer, like summer of uh, 2021? Some of those photos will be David's wedding, right? Certainly, you went to David's wedding over the summer of 2021, but also you and your partner went to Halifax and took a bunch of photos there. And that's a part of summer 2021. So if you start categorizing your images, right? Uh, and so you categorize David's wedding images in the category of summer 2021 with uh, your Halifax images of summer 2021, right? Now, if you search for a category of summer 2021, those images will all pop up, which means that you don't necessarily have to be going back and forth between these folders or combining the two. So David's wedding fo photos can exist in David's wedding folder and your Halifax images can exist within the Halifax summer 2021 folder. But by categorizing them, it enables you to see all of those ones, all of those images which brings up a really important point. So whenever we search for these items, they're not changing their location on our hard drive. What ACDC is doing is it's showing us where these images are. It's just simply put going, hey, you've made a, a bunch of categories here. I can collect these images and show them to you. I'm just showing you them, but we're, we're not actually interacting with their location on the hard drive. I'm not changing where these images are. If I go to nature here, I've got a bunch of images here that have very different locations. So the nature category is one we applied to images that are in multiple different folders. So I have uh, these, these images right here, right? Uh, these ones, um, they're located in uh, Sunday. They're in my picture folder Sunday. And then I have these images right here, which are located in my landscape. So they're located in different folders, but because we've categorized them, we're showing them all together, uh, which is super powerful. So once again, if we're using the example of uh, David's wedding and Halifax images, right? This is exactly what that is. These first, uh, you know, 20 or so images or whatever are David's wedding, right? And these last images here are the images of Halifax that I took there. They're just categorized differently. And so when I click on that category, I'm getting a whole list that shows where these images are and they're from different folders. Now, uh, like I said, I can bring up fours. So fours, like now every image that's located in my entire hard drive that has a rating of four is now being shown to us. And some of these are gonna be in different locations, right? Um, versus a rating of red. Now I'm searching for every image in my hard drive that has a rating of red versus a rating of green. So we can also mix and match, right? So I can take this nature category here. So I'm using the nature category once again. And let's also add a green label to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the chevron here, this little uh, easy select icon. And when I click on nature, it's now combining it with a label of green. So Diane, do you see that? Do you see that the nature has now been combined with a completely different um, categorization method? 
So when I click those two together, the list that I'm getting is very curated. Not only is it images that are nature images in this case, but they're also the images within that nature category that also have a sub rating of green. Does everybody see that? And I can go pretty nuts with this. I can add even more chevrons as I go through. Um, you can combine categories and also keywords like Tommy has, uh, has mentioned. Thank you, Peter, take care. Can you search for two keywords or categories at the same time? Yeah. Um, so uh, let's do uh, nature and uh, people. So uh, do I even have any people? I don't think I do. Yeah, there we go. So I have nature listed as a category that I'm searching for. Uh, and also I'm looking for images shot in Toronto uh, of which there are first a uh, couple images in the first top here. Um, uh, do you see that David? Do you see I have two categories listed at the same time? Also, we could get pretty funky with this and go, oh, I'm gonna add a rating of two as well. So now it's just the images that are uh, Toronto nature images with the cat with a rating of two. Yeah. Um, Stanford asked, what if you move the images outside of ACDC? Will the categories remain outside of ACDC? They already are outside of ACDC Stanford. There's no, we're not importing these images. They're just on our hard drive. We're working off of our hard drive. So they already are outside of ACDC. So the categories are remaining. Uh, Tommy asked, after moving images outside of ACDC, you will need to recatalog that promost Windows file folder. Is that what you meant? Clarification needed. Pam asked, does date needed uh, to be added in properties or can we just search the get date in the calendar? Yeah, you can search for the date in the calendar. I think when you click on an image um, and you click, uh, let's see here, ACDC metadata, you could, should be able to reassign this. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can just click on the date. Diane asked, I have 25,000 photos, need to get them all to the base folders, but in some sort of categories, a lot less time. Yeah. Uh, Linda says, cool. Uh, Jeff, can you explain rating again uh, and its purpose? Uh, Jeff, again, everything that we're doing here, categories, keywords, ratings, labels, et cetera, you assign their purpose. You figure out a, a method by which they have a meaning to you. The tool is there to provide different platforms for people to utilize them. I mentioned earlier when I said ratings, right, that um, Alec Watson, he used a method where he culled images that had a rating of four or five. He edited images that have a rating of two or three, and then he left perfect images at a rating of one. Uh, so he did that. Uh, some other people will just use a rating of one to mean like, oh, this is my least favorite image. And this five is my favorite image. So again, it, it, it's completely fluid. There's no truth to this. You just you determine your own truth. It's all, it's, it's AC, ACDC metaphysics, my friend. Um, Adam, can we catalog the files for you? Uh, okay. Can you exclude catalogs in a search? Oh, that's a good question. I might need to verify over email that question. I think so, but I, I don't know. But if you email me, Eric, I can answer you. Um, Tommy asked, I trust only ACDC with my photo collection over, okay. Oh, that's a great compliment. Thank you. Um, clarified a few things. Awesome. Okay. So let's just quickly go over making some, before I get too close to answering too many more questions here, I'll spend some more time at the very end, but maybe one other thing we can do is we could just talk about adding keywords really fast. Cause it does very, uh, sl change slightly. Uh, from uh, from adding uh, uh, categories. Um, okay, so in categories, you have the ability to add sets as well. Um, sets give you these little quick click icons here. Um, the same can be done in keywords. So if we wanted to make a set of keywords, we could do so. Um, in order to do that, you click on a new quick keyword set and then enables you to list a bunch of different uh, um, uh, keywords together. And then you can change the amount of columns, et cetera, or, or rows involved. And this is useful if you want to um, 
if you have some sort of structure to the way you would keywords. For example, wedding photography images might have different keywords from travel photos, might have different keywords from fashion photos, might have different keywords from uh, from animal photography, might have different keywords from, you get the point. So when you can create quick kick quick keyboard sets, uh, it gives you the ability to pull up different keywords that you can create yourself. And I've created a landscape uh, a, a keyword set. And then what that does is enables me to click on these images. And then I can do something like forest, for example. And uh, then these images uh, will have a uh, forest applied. I believe they, when you click on them, uh, it should be visible to you that forest is now checked. Uh, so that forest appears in the keyword list uh, un underneath. Let's just apply all of them, even though uh, ocean might not apply for these, but let's just go through. So click on nature. They have the nature keyword now. They have the ocean keyword now. There we go. Oops. There we go. I meant to click on all my images there. There we go. I think it's because I have auto advance turned on. I'll turn that off for keywords. There we go. That makes it easier. So ocean is clicked on all of them. Uh, then we'll go urban, architecture, summer, fall, winter, and spring. And you'll see those keywords pop up there. They're listed there in the uh, in the in that sort of directory underneath. You'll also notice that your images will, when you click on them, they'll have a listing of the keywords that are contained. And you'll also notice once again, if we go to metadata, uh, so moving away from the organized panel to the metadata panel, you can see that the keywords are listed here as well. So now that the keywords are a section there. Um, so these keywords have been added to our image and much like categories, they are referenceable in the catalog menu here. So if I wanted to see uh, nature images, or if I wanted to see spring, I believe spring was one of the keywords. So there's all my spring images, um, but I wanted to see my spring images that have a rating of two, let's say. Uh, let's click on the little easy select icon there. And then now I have all my images that are propped up here that are spring images that once again have a rating of two. Uh, also, what you can do within keywords um, is, is you can, like I said, you can add sub keywords. So I can right click on an, uh, a keyword, for example, I'll add new keyword and much like how it does for categories, it allows me to create another sub keyword. So if I wanted to create a, a sub keyword within forest of oak, for example, I could then add that sub keyword, which now should be once again, referenceable within the catalog panel. Uh, although I might need to refresh to see it. Let's see here. Oh, you know where it is? It's, it's under the little icon here. Yeah, there you go. So uh, let's talk about, so we've talked about hard drive versus importing. We've talked about importing our photos uh, from a camera or a disk drive. We've talked about navigating in manage mode, uh, sort of where, where different locations are in manage mode that matter to you. We've talked about bulk renaming our images. We've talked about applying metadata files, metadata like keywords, metadata like categories, metadata like uh, ratings and labels. Um, we've also briefly touched on uh, embedding our metadata and the importance of embedding your metadata within your files uh, so that you can reconstruct your database need be using the uh, catalog files menu. Yeah. We've talked about uh, identifying based on those icons. So what those icons mean in the actual manage mode. And then finally, we've talked about embedding metadata in the files, the importance of that. So that sort of covers everything I wanted to talk about today in regards to cataloging your images. There is a lot of questions that I haven't been able to get to. So I'm gonna have a look at those questions now. I'll keep talking, but formally the workshop uh, is, is over. That's sort of everything I had to cover today. But let's just have a look at some of your questions. Um, can categories be removed in batch mode? That's a good question. I don't believe so. 
Um, no, right. So you talked about earlier about removing categories. So you can't do it within batch, but what we can do is you can click on your images. Uh, so I've navigated to a folder. I have a bunch of images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove them from the uh, caribou uh, uh, category. So they've now been removed from the car caribou category. And I made that as a batch interaction for all of the images within this folder. So um, if, for example, if we wanted to uh, search, I'm just going to reapply that really quickly. If we wanted to search for our caribou images within the category section, okay, there's all of our caribou images. Uh, that So now that I've searched for caribou, what I can do is I can undo that, uh, that category I can, as a batch action that applies to all of these images in our uh, menu panel here. So now when I search for caribou, because it's been unapplied, it's telling me that there's no assigned items that have that menu. So hopefully that answers your question, Bill. Um, let's see here. I have pictures in various directories and subdirectories. Will you talk about temporarily flatten the directories so I can process them all at once? Uh, Stanford, I am not super familiar with that. Uh, I would suggest sending me an email and I'll find an answer for you. Uh, I'll probably have to talk to the developers about that. Once again, my email is aprice at acbsystems.com. Um, thank you, Rex. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Gregor. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Randy asked, where is the info on manual sorting the user has done retained? Manual sorting. Apparently is not in the database and therefore not retained when migrating to a new computer or installing ACDC, correct? Any plan to add this capability in the future? What do you mean, Randy, by manual sorting? Because uh, I haven't used that language so far in the workshop, so I just need to understand what you mean by manual sorting. Um, Jeff asked, how do you get properties organized on the screen? I believe we talked about that a couple times, but just in case I missed it, Jeff, when you click on an image, uh, properties panel is on the right, organized just down at the bottom. Owen asked, hi, Adam, my front page has the section containing manage, media view, et cetera, placed in the middle of that line and not on the right side. Uh, my front page has the containing manage, media view, et cetera, placed in the middle of that line. So manage and media view. So these are in the center, not on the right. Interesting. Uh, I don't think they're contained within the workspace. So they're located on the, huh. I wonder if I can move them. You can sort of move most windows here, but I'm just curious. E email me, Owen. Uh, or sorry, email me. Uh, who? Which one was this? Sorry. Uh, yeah, email me, Owen, and I will get an answer for you. Yeah, I, we could probably, if you could take a screenshot of it, I could find out more. There's probably a reason why it's up there, but I'll, I'll have to find out. Um, Robert asked, how do you handle pictures on an external hard drive? Uh, it sort of works the same thing, Robert. You Basically, when you uh, interact with the external hard drive, you are browsing to it once again. Uh, so you're going to be uh, adding thumbnails, that sort of thing to that, uh, that drive. And then... Um, when you go to interact with uh, ACDC and you've, once again, you've located that external drive that's locked, pl plugged in or whatever, you can start adding database information to that folder, to that drive, excuse me. But it's gonna know that it's an external drive. And at some point that external drive is gonna get unplugged or whatever. Uh, and then you're essentially going to be left with a bunch of orphan files on the on the uh, in ACDC. It's not that the files don't exist. It's just that ACDC doesn't uh, can't create a path to those files anymore. Um, but it's absolutely something you can you can database an external hard drive. And when then when you plug it in, that database will be good. You can interact with those images in that way. Um, is there a limit as to how many files ACDC can handle? Not really. No. Um, in the files, I'm assuming you mean images. Uh, yeah, not not really. Like you can, you can. I mean, there's people that have hundreds of thousands of images in ACDC. So um, it might take longer to browse. You know, in the sense it's going to take a bit longer to pull those thumbnails, etc. But like we've talked about earlier, I they believe there's ways to auto browse folders um, so that it gives you the process to generate those thumbnails to begin with. 
Uh, John White asked, as a relatively recent subscriber to ACDC as a home buyer, I'm annoyed about the catalog feature regarding faces. Annoyed about it. Uh, okay, so then it sounds like you go on to detail more. I have program supported computer systems for 30 years is self evident one of the most recent developments is the face assignments is aimed at professional photographers. Therefore, what was the rationale of providing the facility for tagging faces in earlier versions which could not be searched I a complete waste of time. Uh, so they yeah so we needed so yeah the, um, previously. You could search search him. Uh, you could search faces. When it was introduced, uh, there was always a, a metadata element associated with a face. Um, there's a little pat uh, panel on the side here called people, and so people brings up images that have specific names. Uh, so this was in the basically the first release of the face uh, face detection. It had this. So I'm not sure about the the truth of that, John, but I'll continue on. Uh, not be searched you can place waste of time uh not compatible with earlier version data storage in my opinion may be coalescing the version but this is what i bought okay um well i don't know how to answer that it sounds like more of a concern in regards to the efficiency of it but if you do have any like concerns about it you can email me um once again my email is a price at acdsystems.com uh Uh, Paul asked, under categories, I have moments which seem to have hundreds of dates, which I do not believe I have ever set, intentionally at least. Moments. Under categories, I have moments. Is there moments? Huh. Um, I wonder, what are, where do you get your photos from, Paul? Sometimes like... Um, so you don't believe you've ever set them and and the moments is a date i'm assuming they're just have a specific date associated with them uh the, yeah i'm not certain about that i do want to do want to get an answer for you though uh ron asked i assume all the acdc categories ratings labels etc can all be searched and displayed using acdc software correct i.e. if I send pictures to someone else that doesn't use ACDC, that person's photo software cannot utilize this metadata. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah, ACDC metadata is proprietary. It is only visible in ACDC. The reason why you add ACDC metadata is to make, is to utilize the digital asset management functions of ACDC to uh, sort of make those processes faster. Now, there are some situations that you can take ACDC metadata and convert it to IPTC data. The most common one that people do is they take their keywords that they've assigned in ACDC metadata and under the keywords field in IPTC, which is universally visible to all uh, computers, right? What they'll do is they will um, they will add that keyword those keywords in here, um, so that is doable, um, and uh, but the, in general, generally speaking, the ACDC metadata that you add is visible to ACDC users, is not visible to people outside of ACDC, with a few caveats. Um, yeah, there should be Dixie. I think if I go to metadata, embed in all files should be the, the way to resolve that. So you go to tools, metadata, embed, ACDC, metadata, embed in all files. Uh, in the, what I've been doing so far is just embed in selected files because I've been working with specific folders, but I think you should be able to just embed in all files. Uh, James and Chris asked, what is the difference between category and keyword? Um, yeah, they're, they're similar. They're very similar. Um, this is a question that's come up a couple of times and I feel like I've never been able to sufficiently answer it. There is a logistical difference between the two, but for 99% of user interactions, there is no difference in terms of the way that they're set up. And then the way that ACDC is sort of designed to have you utilize them is one is a macro level and one is a micro level uh, sense of uh, essentially a keyword uh, um, a structure. 
Um, so y- people can use keywords and never touch categories. People can use categories and never touch keywords. The reason why earlier I sort of had utilized nature as a sort of macro level category um, and uh, and sort of specific keywords that fall under that nature category uh, as as keywords in this case is sort of just to create a uh, mental distinction between the two, but that mental distinction is not necessary. And once again, ACDC does allow for you to be, uh, to play in that space. Um, but now that being said, uh, so now it's 99% of users will not need to know the difference between categories and keywords. Now there is a technical difference between the two. Uh, please email me and I will find you this, the answer to that question. If you need to know it, there is a single uh, uh, difference between the two. And I think it is it, it, it relates to how that is stored in the database. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for you. But once again, my email is aprice at acdsystems.com. Email me and I will get an answer for you. Uh, so that's James's question in addition to Chris's question. Uh, Daniel asked, can you say a few words about collections? I recently did a tutorial on uh, sort of this. Daniel, I'd, I'd reference that on our ACDC YouTube page. Um, that sort of covers everything. Let's see, is, do we still have a fair amount of people? Yeah, so we still got a fair amount of people in there. I, that's kind of it, guys. That's uh, Those are all the questions in the q and I'm sure there's questions that I haven't been able to um, been able to tackle. But like I said, please email me. Um, and then the other thing is, well, I will have this on our YouTube uh, page. So you will be able to view this on our YouTube page fairly soon. Um, Chris, can you explain how to export files related to a specific keyword or category? Uh, yeah, you once again have to email me about that. Thank you, Dixie. I appreciate that. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Bernard. Hopefully this was helpful at clearing a lot of things up for you. Um, Doc, it depends on the program. Um, I mean, I, I the one of the big differentiation elements was the one that I sort of mentioned multiple times during this workshop. And that's the fact that ACDC is, um, works directly off of the hard drive rather than having some lengthy uh, import process where the images themselves are moved to a direct uh, a database. Um, thank you, Joel. Appreciate that. Uh, like I said, all of these will be located on our YouTube page. So once again, our YouTube page, I will upload it here. Uh, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you, Gigi Green. I appreciate that. I've been talking for quite a while, so I'm going to mute my mic. I'm just about out of, out of, uh, out of uh, uh, what's the word for it? Out of, uh, uh, well, I'm out of voice at this point. Um, but like I said, please email me. If you have any questions, I, lots of questions I wasn't able to answer, email me. I'll get an answer for you. Um, if you uh, want to see a feature improvement, please email me. If you have some sort of degree of support question, I can probably help you with that as well. Um, yeah. And then, uh, like I said, all of our feature suggestions, pardon me, are, uh, moved and sent to the respective developers. So they do, we're a small company that gets right to who it needs to see right away. So, okay, guys, thank you so much. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Uh, I'm signing off. Take care.